Okay, so it's been taking me a while to film a fairly simple video because this is my November TBR, which is a video I'm really excited to film, but eloquence, words, sometimes when you film, they don't leave your mouth okay. And then I forgot a whole book. So, so we're here again, we're gonna film it. There's a cat in the room. He's, he, he talks today. He has a lot of thoughts. So if you hear him, just nod your head and go, you're right, Putao, you're right. But we're gonna get into it. It's the second to last TBR of the year. I am really excited. I wanna read all the things. Do I have time to read all the things? Will I prioritize reading all the things? Is my mental health a chaotic roller coaster? Correct, all of those things are true. I still have a very ambitious TBR, Putao, where are we going? How about you come over here, Putao? Come over here. Don't scratch at the door. If I let him out of the room, he's just gonna yell from out there. Yeah, I, there's just no pleasing you. Anyways, um, so we're first gonna go through my obligations and then we're gonna go through my anticipated releases. And then there's the Skoden Readathon, which I have a whole stack of books I'm excited to pull from for that. And I have a reading project to talk to you guys about. So I have a lot of things I wanna get to and will it happen? Who knows? There's a wide variety of genres though. And I always do really well when I do that. And there's a wide variety of page lengths and we'll see, we'll see. I'm going in with optimistic, excited energy because my favorite thing to do is to plan my life when my life is in chaos, which we are in right now. So obligation reads for my local book club. I have Boy, Snow, Bird. This is by Helen Oyeyemi. And I read The Icarus Girl earlier this year. If you want to see my thoughts, that's in a September wrap up. And I really liked this author. So I wanted to read something else. And she's perfect for my local book club. And this one kind of gave me November autumnal vibes where we have like loose Snow White retelling inspiration and it's a literary contemporary in Massachusetts following this family as it goes through revelations. That's all I know. I loved this author's writing and I loved their debut so I want to try out more. That's right Putao. I'm going to try out more. Uh, another book that I'm reading for obligations is Semiosis. This is the patron buddy read. It became a joke that I just kept throwing it on polls until it won which is true. I, I have my own agendas once in a while, <laughs> but we're all pretty excited to read it. I just like following weird alien species sometimes, and I think that is what this book is going to deliver. Another obligation for a book club, and I'm very excited because this is Tammy's um, first edition in the new series, like the revamping of the Chinese literature book club. I don't know if that's the name of it, but I'll link her announcement video down below, and we are reading Strange Beasts of China. I'm pretty sure that's the name. I don't know what it's about, which is funny because Tammy gave me a whole list of books to choose from or said I was thinking of reading this one. And I said, yeah, sure, because that's who I am with book clubs. I'll read anything. <laughs> like if you tell me, hey, there's a book club, you want to read this book? Well, I've gotten better at not doing too many book clubs at once, but I'm yeah, I don't. I'll just read the book. I know, Putao, maybe I should look into things more. I know this is not a very useful TBR if people want to know books, but it is what it is. Um, can you tell the type of week I am having? I am talking to my cat while you guys are watching. Now, and then we have my, my most anticipated reads, which I'll just talk about briefly because you guys already know about them, but these are like books. They come out, I'm dropping everything to read them that day. The World We Make Great comes out November 1st. Ah, I've been rereading The City We Became end of October and oh, it's glorious. I mean, I know opinions exist. I know not everyone loves the city we became, but rereading it, I'm like, but how? <laughs> it's so good. It's so creepy and unsettling. I'm so glad I'm reading it in October because when I first read it, it was came out in April and like it was still creepy then, but like reading the eldritch horror vibes right now, mm, it's good. It's good. I'm having a great time. I'm excited to say no to eldritch horror on November 1st. I'm ready. And then we have The Lost Metal coming out by Brandon Sanderson, I believe in the US November 15th. And we are having the live show for that November 20th, 3 p.m. That is the Sunday after its release. And I know that's pretty soon for some people, but we're all planning to read that that week. We wanted to schedule it before American holidays kind of took over all of our schedules because we all are very busy people in like November and December. And I'm just excited. I'm like, again, November 15th, picking up that book it's happening. So I think those are some of the big heavy hitters. Stuff that I'm still reading in October that I'll probably be reading in November because as if this list isn't going to be ambitious enough, I, I still have things I haven't finished. <laughs> One of them is the short story anthology Terraform, which I've talked about a bit. I, I have a short for it and this is just a pretty thick anthology, but all the short stories are like five to 15 pages. So we read a short story a day in our buddy read, which is so fun. Highly recommend buddy reading anthologies. I just think it's so eye-opening about what you and other people like, don't like, disconnect with. It's just so fun to 
like tease apart. And yeah, we're about, we've, we've finished Watch and we're on Worlds right now. And I think we might finish it by the end of November. We'll see. But I don't, I'm not rushing this. It'll be read by the end of the year. And then I'm still reading The Golden Fool. And I will finish that soon. I'm actually like almost done with it. I just have different reading plans for the weekend. I don't want to be reading The Golden Fool this weekend, partially because I have different plans and also because I am mad at Fitz right now. <laughs> and if you know, you know. Ah, <laughs> oh, just like, I, I really do want to throw him off a cliff. Like, I have a lot of angry thoughts about Fitz, like to the point where I'm like too scared to share them with the internet. That's, I'm pretty mad at him. Like, I, it, because he's a redeemable person, I am almost more angry at him than at my highest rage points with Kyle. And I know that says a lot, but like, I truly, it just happened today. I read a section that I'm like, and it was a couple sections and things are just piling up, but I'm just like, Fitz. So I need to finish it <laughs> and keep going. It's a very well-crafted story to make me have these emotions. And I understand the project, <sighs> but Fitz, but Fitz. Anyways. So those are things pulling over. I do want to continue, if not finish, again, very ambitious. We are just all the positive energy. But the Chilling Effects series, which I don't know if it has a name, but this is the next book that I for sure want to read if I don't read both of them. And I, I want to see if this cat becomes more of an animal companion. Have I ever read an animal companion space story? No, but psychic cat in space. And this series left such an impression on me when I read it last month that I bought a video game to play that I am still playing slowly. Um, just very, very bad at video games. Um, but I really want to read the second one for sure. And if I can, the third one, like that would be great. If I just like fell into this series and wanted to finish it, I'd, I'd be pretty content. Like I'd be having a good time. This is like my like space adventure vibe, like for the genres when I need a break from some of the other stuff. And now we're going to get into my pile of possibilities for the Scode and Readathon, which my favorite challenge that was added for this, I'm going to have the announcement video down below, was you need to read Indigenous works for seven days straight. That's like the middle spot on the bingo board. And I can totally do that. Like after I read The World We Make Great and my local book club read, I can totally take seven days before The Lost Metal comes out to just do that. And I have so many books that I've been wanting to read. Oh, I'm just so excited. So my patrons voted for me on my TBR to read a lots away. So this is definitely happening. And I've been wanting to read this for a while. Um, I think it's younger end of YA. We have um, a sexual main character. I think she has a good relationship with her family and friends. And there's kind of like a whodunit sort of thing, like kind of Scooby-Doo gets brought up a lot when people talk about this which has me excited. So this is definitely one that I'll be getting to. Um, I also have, it, this was also on the poll, but it didn't win, but I really want to read it. And I got it from the library and that is Man Made Monsters. This is a YA horror short story collection. I want to read it so bad. <laughs> I am really hoping I love it. I know Bethany really enjoyed it when she read it recently. And I'm just hoping to have a, the same good time. I love short story horror. Like, I think that's maybe my favorite subgenre in short stories. Like, I think that might be it. Yeah, Putao. I think it might be it. So that one's definitely one I really want to prioritize. There's a bunch of other squares. And so I have things on my Kindle and around me that I may pull from. So Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. I read Mongrels earlier this year, and I would love to read another work by him. This is a novella, so maybe I can like squeeze it in. I don't know what it's about. I just assume it's horror or horror adjacent. And then also I have... <laughs> more horror. I have Taktumi. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this is an Arctic indigenous anthology of horror stories. It's less than 200 pages. I, I want it. I'm waiting for it to come in from the library. I've been on a short story kick. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've just been really enjoying reading short stories lately. Like I always do, but lately it's just really been hitting the spot for me. Another one I want to get to, maybe, oh, I'm trying to find it in my stack of things. It's down here. So Evie a while back bought me like all the books, and this is not a Louise Erdrich but it is Eden Robinson, who I believe is indigenous. And this is Son of a Trickster, first in a trilogy, and it's a Canadian indigenous author. So this can help me outside of the 48. And I know it's, I think, pretty beloved in Canada, but it doesn't get a lot of traction here in the United States. So I'd like to read it. Another option for above or not in the 48 continental United States is The Marrow Thieves, which has been on my radar for a while. And I just quickly got it from the library because I was watching Ashley's TBR this morning. And I was like, oh yeah, that's been on my radar for so long. I am getting this book. So I have access to this one as well, which I think is more dystopian, which I like. Um, so those are, I think, all of my options for that. And I'm just excited. I can definitely read for seven days straight. 
from all of those things. And there's enough genres in there and age groups and mm, I'm excited. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is I gave Stephanie, my, one of my oldest, closest bookish friends on the internet, some power over my TBR. Because I got into reading the same way I think a lot of us do, which is reading whatever books are around the house. <laughs> um, it's not always books that are meant for our age, or you read all those and then you're just bored. And you, For me, my mom and my grandma read a lot of mystery and cozy mysteries. And so I grew up reading the Cat Who series. But since then, I haven't read any cozy mystery. And my friend Stephanie reads a ton of cozy mystery. And I'm like, I want to try it out. November seems like the time to read cozy mysteries. What are three cozy mysteries you would recommend specifically to me? And I want to make this a vlog project. So it's not a secret TBR because like, I'm, I don't know. I don't feel like keeping this a secret, but there will be a vlog where I read these cozy mysteries and talk about them and what's working and not working for me as I'm exploring a new genre that I really haven't touched since I was a preteen. And so the three that she selected for me in order of seasonalness <laughs> is Death by Dumpling, which makes me hungry every time I look at it, a Salted Caramel, and I say caramel, not caramel, don't come for me, I'm from Ohio, but this looks very autumnal. And then the most like transitional of like late fall winter apple cider slaying look at this cover like ooh. so i'm hopeful i'm really hopeful one if not all of them will i don't know bring me a reading experience that i haven't had in a long time maybe bring me some nostalgia we'll see and you know if this whole list of things wasn't enough i have one other book i just want to mention because I might get to it, um, especially because this is the time of year where I am usually drawn to romances. And this is one that a lot of people have been liking, and that is Half a Soul. I don't know if I'll love it as much as everyone else, but I do like Bridgerton, which was Regency romance, and people have been comping it a tiny bit to that, not like, you know, the sexy times and stuff like that, but I don't necessarily need that in my romance and books. And I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Like, I want to be on the hype train for that series. I really do. So I have it on my Kindle. Will it happen? I don't know. But this is the time of year where I can really f be feeling that or I just fall into Akamath, which I don't think will happen this year. <laughs> but that's traditionally what happens this time of year. So that's the TBR. Uh, let me know what you're going to be reading. Uh, sorry, it was a little chaotic here. I'll show you the cat so you guys don't think I, if you didn't hear him, Puta, come here. Yeah, come here. Show them that I wasn't just talking to air, which I mean, talking to the cat's not much better, but it's better than nothing. Here he is in all of his glory, being the helpful co-host I never asked for. <laughs> Why do you look so disgruntled? Anyways, if you want to leave an emoji, leave an otter or something equally cute for son of a trickster, because I think that's an otter, right? pretty sure that's an otter. But leave something like that. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.